welcome ye, welcome all. <laughs> To another <laughs> honest review, <laughs> and this week we be reviewing uh, the lighthouse. <laughs> <laughs> you changed accents so many times just then. I only saw one step away from. Are you ready, kid? <laughs> <laughs> aye aye, Connor. <laughs> I can't hear Stu. <laughs> aye aye, Connor. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> <laughs> There's going to be some spoilers ahead of this review, <laughs> so you have been warned. Goffy, what on God's green, actually, no, not on God's green earth, what on God's black, black and, and white, white earth? I, I don't know how to start. The Green Goblin and Cedric Diggory with weird accents. <laughs> <laughs> Starring a strange film set in the 1800s sometime. They're on a remote island maintaining a lighthouse for about four weeks and it turns into a slow, very long film filled with boozy rambling, talking, fighting, crying, screaming, wanking and pretty much every human emotion possible. I do not know where to start. Every time I see Willem Dafoe, all I can hear is shark bait. <laughs> <laughs> What in the accent you mean? <laughs> I couldn't understand the fucker. Like all he was doing was just going, "Hey, for a kid, for your peg leg, for his scurvy curry, for his chef curry, you fucking show your sheet off, you fucking liar, fucking mermaid." I have no idea what the, this was from the same director of the witch, wasn't it, or the witch? It is. Which was okay, but this, however, it wasn't really horror. It was just some weird experimental movie. That, <laughs> it was just a strange. It looks like someone's gone create a film for your homework, and the best film gets Friday off school. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm sure it's got like really good reviews hasn't it yeah yeah I struggled to concentrate on it it was so fucking strange like 15 minutes in we've got a mermaid and like I knew I was either gonna really like it or really hate it and I was definitely edging towards hate at this point <laughs> Jesus then he catches a seagull and just fucking batters it and I was like alright I can stick with this let me see where this goes <laughs> but then it descended into tentacles and mermaid vaginas and just scream wanking I mean to be honest a wank's a wank isn't it <sighs> <laughs> that mermaid vagina was it was interesting but it got more interesting when halfway through the mermaid became William Defoe <laughs> he was fucking <laughs> smacking him in the face looking like Poseidon <laughs> I I was so confused about my own sexuality at this point <laughs> <laughs> I just thought that William Defoe like looked like What's his name? Fucking Bootstrap Bill. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he just had loads of fucking cockles all over him, didn't he? Question. Go. If you had found William Defoe with the cockles all over his face, or your cockles all over his face, <laughs> <laughs> if you had found him like a beached mermaid with that fishy vagina that mm -hmm. looked like a ham sandwich, mm -hmm. you were alone on that island with the lighthouse, you had been going a little bit crazy, Kofi, would you? No, mate. Why not? Green Goblin. <laughs> Is that, what, what, is that what you've just called the vagina? Or yeah, like yeah, that's so fucking hell. Don't lie, you'd definitely be gobbling that one. Wow. <laughs> it's terrible, terrible. <laughs> just lying on him, Peter! <laughs> There's a point in it where one of them just says to the other, he goes, if I had a steak... <laughs> A rare bloody steak. I'd fuck it. <laughs> what? It's just what? after they're just suck it and drunk, aren't they? And then one of them goes, what? And the other one goes, what? And it just turns into, what, 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 what's the problem with you? H hang on. And then, and then that's when fucking, what's his name? Thomas goes into that mad rent, doesn't he? He's like, damn ye, let Neptune strike you dead with my hand. <laughs> fucking, what's going on? Like, what is actually happening? <laughs> You're fond of me lobster, ain't you? <laughs> <laughs> the film just fucking trails off after that. We're just Robert Patterson seeing some strange shit. What does he do? He, he murders Tom, doesn't he? He fucking beats him so fucking hard that he grows tentacles and then he buries him. Well, he half buries him, doesn't he? He undigs him. He un <laughs> Weird things happen. The way I saw it is he like finally succumbed to the light, didn't he? Which was obviously yes. driving him a bit crazy. And he goes upstairs after he's killed him. He finally gets to the light and it's fucking beautiful, isn't it? It's glorious. It looks like a giant dog. Diamond. But at this point, I was really hoping he'd like, because he reaches his hand out, doesn't he? And I really wanted him to just touch it and go, oh, and that'd be the end of the film, because it was really hot. <laughs> <laughs> Which would have been fantastic. Oh, oh, fuck, fuck, fuck. Yeah, yeah. Just, that would have been a beautiful <laughs> ending to this film. But instead, he goes to touch it and just basically jizzes in his pants and then falls down some stairs. And wind up on beach with an eye pecked out, getting your guts pecked out by seagulls. Oh, yeah, how the fuck well. did he get to the beach? The seagulls 
Beatles just fucking fly them away. What are, you, what are you doing, mate? When it got to that point, I don't know how you boys interpreted it. I mean, I tried to interpret this film, but I <laughs> interpreted that the whole time he was on the beach getting picked apart and he was he was just hallucinating. Well, um, what's his name? Thomas did say that he was like, you're going crazy and you're not really here, didn't he? I thought like the whole thing was just, just it was just hallucination because he was mortally wounded and just dying on a beach. <laughs> Yeah, That's how I kind of interpret it. Well, like Lost. Yeah. Like Lost? Probably better than Lost, to be honest. <laughs> Obviously, there's a lot of confusion here with this film. I've seen this, like, about, I think, five times now. That's not what? even a lie. Just because I want to understand it more. Okay. And Robert Eggers, so, yeah, he did write and direct The Witch, and it was a thing that we picked up on in the review of The Witch, uh, which you should go and check out if you haven't already, that the language used was very, very historically accurate to the time. So when Eggers... Eggers did this film, he again wanted to be, I, I really want two people from that era, from two separate parts of America, coastal America, and I want them to be fucking bang on accurate, to the point where, like, the instructions he was given to Willem Dafoe and Robert Pattinson was like, the third word of the fourth line, I need you to say it 75% slower, like, shit like that, like, to a T. So the historical accuracy of the dialogue and of everything, the way it's written, is, is spot on, but it did take me, like, fuck me, I didn't actually start start understanding the dialogue till like the third time I saw it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I have now, thankfully, picked up on the overall <laughs> plot of the film. So this is effectively how it goes. Eggers has drawn a lot on mythology as an influence of the film. So as a setup, when we get Tom and Winslow, Tom's like an old, haggard, like weathered boss type character, while Winslow does the bulk of the physical hard labor. So over time, Winslow gets infuriated that he's running around doing all the work while Tom does like next to nothing and they have like loads of arguments throughout the film where it's a clash of ages and, and personalities we do learn however that Winslow isn't who he says he is his real name's Thomas Howard but he switched places with the real Winslow who died at a logging camp to work on the lighthouse because he's a bit of a drifter that subplot comes a bit later in the film but overall with Defoe's and Pattinson's characters Eggers has a deeper layer to the relationship between them drawing on the myths of Prometheus and Proteus like a kind of what if they'd met each other in Greek mythology? So Proteus was a sea god, sometimes called the Old Man of the Sea, that influenced Defoe's character. So that's why he's a bit of like a withered sea dog, places a sea curse on Winslow. He's got beliefs in bad luck. Like if you kill a seabird, it'll bring bad luck, uh, which happens in the film. And then you've got Prometheus, who, who famously stole the fire from the gods. So in this case, Winslow spends the film trying to steal the light from the lighthouse tower and gets jealous that Defoe isn't allowing him access to it. So when he finally does get access to it at the end of the film, we end up getting him with his guts pecked out by seagulls on the beach, when in the Prometheus myth, his punishment for stealing the fire was getting tied to a rock, having an eagle come in every day, pecking out his liver, and then his liver grew back every day. So it's a constant cycle of pain and torment. And then even the light in the lighthouse is said in the film to be St. Elmo's fire, with St. Elmo being the patron saint of sailors. And then the real phenomenon of St. Elmo's fire fire being a type of plasma where the field around an object can glow with like a blue or like violet colored light during thunderstorms so that like warned sailors of potential lightning strikes and was considered to be like a really good omen among sailors so there's quite a few like real life influences for the film either through art or through mythology even though a lot of them aren't really clear on the first watch when you hear Eggers talking about them you can kind of go back and watch the film again and you know or spot them and understand them a bit more and he's even got like some influences on like pieces of art so you know not just the artistic influence of doing black and white in like 119 to 1 aspect ratio to mimic like early silent cinema but there's the scene where it's a hallucination I guess and Tom grabs Winslow by the throat and it, he's got the light coming from his eyes the light of the lighthouse uh, which was a direct copy of a painting called Hypnosis by Sasha Schneider that scene looked quite like Greek godly as well, didn't it? Like yeah, the way he was yeah. like stood over him. It was almost like God over over like a human, wasn't it? And it looked like a very typical Greek statue. It's got that like vibe about it, definitely. It's a very sort of art house type film where I could see a lot of shots in the film like framed on a wall. They've got like that kind of setup to them. Don't know what you guys overall thought about it though. I think it was like it just wasn't my thing. I don't think I'm interested in that sort of thing, so it just didn't hit well. If you're looking for an enjoyable film, this isn't it. Agreed. 
Do we, we just not right? Okay, I need to, I need to ask this question. So even though <laughs> it's fucking obviously a bit of a, a daft film from your guys' point of views, and I can understand that as well. What do you think of the performances of Defoe and Pattinson? I think they were both really good in the film. I just think the film wasn't my thing. They are good actors. They're both dead dead good actors. To be fair, it's got to be incredibly hard to act in this type of film anyway. Isn't it? Yeah. The one thing that I do think now is the next time we go out for a meal together, one of us has to order a steak and when they say how do you want your steak one of us has to go fucked <laughs> <laughs> fucking hell <laughs> fucked I want a rare bloody steak <laughs> <laughs> so that was our honest review of 2019's The Lighthouse join us next week for another Friday Fright Time and catch us during the week on Tuesdays where we drop some extra content cheers ghoul gang see you next time bye bye <laughs>